Hey you all, welcome back. This is a video about the Ben Nye Cream Foundation, specifically the ones that are labeled as olive shades. I am going to be swatching all of them, demoing almost every single color on my own face actually, even though, spoiler alert, they're all too dark for me, which is fine. I got five shades of this foundation. I'm going to swatch all of them for you, let you know what I think of the colors, the formula, whether they're actually olive in my opinion, and uh, whether I would recommend the foundation. So let's get into it. So quickly I want to touch on like the pricing, packaging, etc. So this is what the actual product looks like. I got one in the full size packaging. I ordered these from Camera Ready Cosmetics, which is where I buy almost all of my professional makeup. Um, love that site. And one cool thing that they do is they allow you to purchase samples of some of the products that they carry. Um, and this is one of those products. Now this, the regular product is $9.50 for half an ounce great value, amazing value. And then these samples, they charge a handling fee of $3.99, which I get that you're charging for like the actual service of them making a sample for you because it's called a handling fee, but $4 for this amount of makeup when you could just get this for $10 and I have a pro discount. So I end up getting this for like $7 or something like that. It's just kind of ridiculous to me that this little thing is $4. And, you know, these are the sample pods that uh, three of them came in, but then one of them, the one that happens to be the shade that is the closest match for me, came in this tiny little sample pod. So look how much smaller that is. And, you know, they just charge the handling fee which is the same, but like, why did this cost the same amount as this? That I like wasn't so much a fan of. So the only one that I purchased in its original packaging, like as not a sample, is Olive Fair P45. And I thought that would be lighter than Olive Cream, but it turns out Olive Cream, it. It, it turns out they're about the same depth as you'll see in the swatches, but Olive Cream is actually just a little bit more yellowy and that's going to get a better match for me and for most olive people. So um, it's a little bit unfortunate that I ended up buying the full size in a color that is like not a match for me at all, but that's okay because honestly these are all going to end up in my kit anyways. And overall I didn't spend too much money. This foundation is not that expensive to begin with, so I I'm not mad. Just thought I would mention all of those things. I do also just want to say right off the bat that I really like this foundation. Texture wise, finish wise, even coverage wise, I would say it's medium buildable on the lower end of full, you know? You're gonna see some close-ups in the demo of how it looks on the skin. And my skin is currently peeling. Like I did a Jesner peel the other day and I, I'm flaky all over and it still looks amazing. I'd be a bad esthetician if I didn't let you know that cream foundations like this typically have heavy uh, waxy bases and this is no exception. So if you are acne prone, I wouldn't use this on a daily basis anyway, which is another reason I'm not disappointed that I have the wrong shade for me. I would only really use this not every day. But if you're not particularly prone to breakouts, but maybe even you're just sensitive, then actually I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this because it doesn't contain fragrances. I really like it. Would I recommend it daily for an acne prone person? No. If you're a new makeup artist and you need to pick up a bunch of shades of foundation, or if you're a seasoned makeup artist and you're just looking to try something new and maybe uh, fill in some gaps in your kit, acquire some new shades of foundation, these are great. Now the shade range on Camera Ready Cosmetics is amazing. There are a whopping 67 shades of this on Camera Ready Cosmetics. Some of them are color corrector shades. There's a black, there's a white. I think there's like a green, like some of them are for stage, but the majority of them seem to be skin tone shades and a lot of them seem to be very rich. So that makes me happy that there is such a wide shade range. Now, is the olive range truly olive? Not really. Now I am wearing a few of these shades on my face today and I think that they look fine. I think I look maybe a little bit peachier than I'm used to. They were also all too dark for me. There wasn't a shade within the olive range that ended up being light enough for me. So that kind of leads me to believe that the term olive for Ben Nye indicates depth rather than undertone. But then they have other dark shades that are not in the olive range. I don't know exactly 
what the reasoning is behind this. I haven't tried all 60 whatever shades of this foundation, so I really couldn't tell you like what the color theory behind the entire range is. Um, however, I can tell you that if you are olive and you're looking for something that has like a really significantly green undertone, unfortunately, I don't think these are it. Also, just a disclaimer, they were sold out of the, what seemed to be the darkest olive shade that they had called Rich Olive, so I wasn't able to pick up a sample of that one. I would say the colors that I have range from medium to dark, but I'm missing like a deep, deep dark color, you know? So that's kind of unfortunate because dark olive skin is a thing and I would love to have been able to swatch that for you, but unfortunately I could not today, so my apologies. Before I move into the demo, I do wanna touch on my thoughts on each shade that I do have to swatch. So Olive Cream and Fair Olive look about the same depth, but as you can see, Olive Cream all the way on the right is pretty golden, and then directly to the left of it, Olive Fair is a similar depth, but a little bit peachier. Now the shade in the center is super peachy to me, which is like not olive at all in my opinion. Uh, so this is light olive. So then the next two shades actually are really nice undertone wise, I think for olive skin. If anything, olive amber, the second darkest one that I have is a little bit warm. Uh, and you'll see in the demo just how warm it appeared on me. And then actually my favorite shade is the darkest one that I have, olive tan. I feel like this one doesn't have too much of an orangey or yellowy or reddish undertone and it ends up being a really good contour for me. Do I see like a strong presence of green? No, but when I look for olive shades, typically what I look for is a yellowish gray tinge and the darker you go, the less gray you want in there because the darker your skin, the easier your foundation or makeup in general is gonna look ashy on you. So um, I think if you are dark olive, then olive tan could be an option and it certainly makes a great contour for me. I think just the other shades kind of made my complexion overall too peachy. So, so let's move into the demo and I'll explain more. So I'm starting off with Olive Fair underneath my eyes. Again, this is what I regrettably ordered in the full size because on the website it looked close to my skin tone, but it actually ended up looking pretty peachy against my skin. So it made a pretty decent under eye corrector. I would never put green under the eyes. It's, it's a pretty peachy color. So I end up using it as an under eye corrector. Then I go in with Olive Amber, which looked like a pretty nice semi-golden shade on my in the swatch on my arm. But as I apply it as like a bronzer here slash like base contour, you can see it's pulling super, super warm on me. Whereas I do typically need something that leans a little bit more grayish green to look natural on me. Um, but I'm gonna end up balancing it out in the end anyway. If you want more in-depth instructions on cream contouring, check out my Danessa Myrick's All of You video. I uh, kind of explain this technique more in depth. So now I'm taking Olive Cream, which is the closest shade to my personal skin tone, and I'm putting that basically everywhere where I did not bronze. And I'm taking it on a smaller brush and using it to spot conceal as well. This foundation, again, is like a medium to buildable coverage. So I do feel that one thin layer all over wasn't enough to cover up my hyperpigmentation. So I did have to spot conceal with it, which is totally fine. It worked well for that. Now I'm taking the darkest shade that I have, Olive Tan, and I'm using that to further define and deepen my contour and also to cool it down a little bit because it is a little bit of a cooler shade. So it ended up doing exactly what I wanted it to do. My skin is still looking pretty warm from the original bronzer shade that I used, which was Olive Amber. But when you have a bunch of different colors and a little bit of artistry knowledge, you can pretty much make anything work. So that's another thing that you'll see me do here. And as you can see, the finish is looking really pretty. My skin was flaky and peely from a chemical peel I did a few days before this, uh, but the foundation is looking really smooth over top, which I'm enjoying. Now, since my overall complexion is looking a little bit too dark and a little bit too yellow, I'm taking a white foundation from Danessa Myricks. I took way too much of that, by the way. You only need a tiny bit of this foundation. It's so thick and pigmented. Um, and I'm using that to highlight. I, I'm simultaneously highlighting with that and 
kind of lightening up my base and cooling down my base overall because that's what a white is going to do. Uh, so that's a trick that you can use if you have light skin and you find that your foundation is kind of going yellowy or orangey on you, which is something that was happening here, obviously, because everything was too dark and a little bit too warm for me. Now I'm taking Olive Light, which is kind of reddish, and I'm using that as a base for my blush just because I wanted to demonstrate as many of the shades as I could. So this is what it's looking like so far in multiple lighting conditions. I think the finish is amazing. I do think I was able to get uh, like a nice contoured and highlighted look with this. I do think again, I'm looking a tiny bit warm, but it's better than looking pink. If you're olive, generally, I would rather see you leaning yellow than leaning pink with your foundation tone. So I'm not mad. And again, I really like the texture of the foundation. My blush is going on really nicely on top. I'm just using MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Light Plus to kind of set everything down. This has a really nice neutral tone, so it's not really altering the shade of the foundation whatsoever and I'll just speed through the rest of my makeup here. I'm using an Inglot brow pomade. I'll have all of the shades of everything I use listed down below, and I'm using a Bedellium Tools eyebrow brush to apply that. Then I'm mixing olive cream with that white Danessa Myrick shade and using that to carve around my brows just to clean them up and highlight underneath the brow bone a little bit. Now, as I do in most of my like cream contoury kind of demos, I'm just using my face powder to set my eyes down, throwing on some mascara. Now I'm mixing these two colors. One of them is a peachy lip glaze from LA Girl, and I'm mixing in just a drop of Real Love from Danessa Myrick's The Color Fix range to try and match the color of my sweatshirt. And I think for just like, you know, an offhand guess, I did a pretty good job at matching. Now, after I applied these gigantic lashes from Therapy by Maya, which I will have linked down below, I realized I needed some bottom liner. So I'm using Nude 12 from the Color Fix range from Danessa Myricks, and I'm just using that to give myself a little bottom winged liner there. And that is pretty much it. I think this foundation looks good on camera. I think it photographs even better. So I'll include some photos with and without flash here so you can see how the foundation looks. So overall, I don't think this is a perfect olive range, although I could definitely make it work. And I do think that the darkest shade that I had, olive tan, is the best option for olive skin. If you have light olive skin, I don't think this range is the best to choose from. Although again, I do love the foundation. So overall, not a total miss, but nor is it a hit for us olive folks, I don't think. So anyways, let me know if you've tried these foundations. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.